Uh, let's talk to Bob Seeley, Conservative MP. He's a member of the Foreign Affairs Select Committee and chair of the All-Party Parliamentary Group on Russia. Good morning to you. Good morning, Julie. Good morning. Uh, thank you very much, Julie, for joining us. Look, we're asking everyone this morning their reaction to what is going on. In terms of what happens next, we've talked so much about what happened over the weekend. What happens next? We've got this uh, this Prigozhin, uh, the leader of the Wagner Group. Um, you know, he's off in Belarus. We believe he hasn't been seen since leaving to get the train there, we understand. Vladimir Putin hasn't been seen since an uh, address to the nation on Saturday morning. Um, we, we don't know where those, Vag those Wagner troop, uh, troops have, have gone. What do you think happens next? Um, I think what happens next is a lot of jockeying for power and jockeying for position in Russia. We need to find out how weak uh, President Putin is. I think it's as the beginning, beginning of the end, but whether he lasts another three weeks or another three years is anyone's guess. Um, and I think we need to find out what uh, Prigozhin's next move is. I find it difficult to believe that this is an end to the affair. Mm. It is a hiatus. It is a pause. And the Russian military, in the meantime, are going to be trying to hold their line steady to make sure there's no mass loss of morale on the Russian on the side of Russian yeah. troops. They will have seen all this stuff. And they will be trying to rein in the power of private military contractor firms, of which Wagner is only the most well-known. Well, indeed, and the Chechens have got them. There are warlords all over the place who've realised that their real power comes not just from the, the billions of rubles siphoned after them, but also the ability to, to wage a war. The irony being, of course, that the Wagner Group and Yevgeny Prigozhin, you know, known as Putin's chef, used to cater events as a restaurateur at uh, the Kremlin before he got the was it multi-billion dollar uh, uh, deal to uh, cater for the Russian army it probably explains why they don't have many rations um, but um, he was basically basically given a load of money built up and allowed to operate and, and make those billions working as mercenaries by Vladimir Putin because he wanted a private mercenary army that he could call on in the event that there was an army pooch uh, for him in Moscow so th and now it's turned on him um, this is the thing. Brigosian goes where the money goes. I mean, he's a brutal, sadistic man. We know that. We know that from you know his past, it, 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 why he was imprisoned as a criminal for violent uh, robberies and the like. I mean, we, he, we know he's you know, smashed someone to death by smashing him with a sledgehammer for for for, for mutiny uh, in, among the Wagner forces. This is this is a man to be reckoned with. But he goes where the cash is. Um, do we think that he was paid billions by Putin to to stand off? Well, had he been paid by? US intelligence, that wouldn't be the first time they've done that. Or was it, as some are suggesting in the intelligence uh, community, that actually Putin uh, or, or the Belarusian president had his children or had members of his family and they were under threat? Um, I, I'm not sure. P P Prigozhin is also going where pa power is as well. And I, I, I do think this was an attempted coup, but I don't think it is, as was as well thought through. Uh, and effectively, both sides blinked because for um, the Russian state to have successfully dealt with that convoy, there were, uh, reading the telegram accounts over the weekend, over a thousand vehicles in it. So that's a pretty big convoy. And for the Russian state to be hitting that and blasting that in the in the middle of, of European Russia, uh, I, I think would have been a disaster for Putin. Having said that, I think Prigozhin, if he'd got to Moscow, there would have been forces loyal to Putin who would have defended the regime uh, and you would have had open fighting in the streets of Put uh, uh, streets of, of the capital city, yeah. and maybe that in Rostov as well. So I think both sides blink. Uh, I think Prigozhin, I can't see him just sitting there enjoying his retirement. Even if he runs his Wagner empire in Africa, mm. I think he's going to be a considerable power player. And I think now the choice is, does he get reintegrated? Does he get retired? Or does he die in mysterious circumstances? Yeah. Or does he enjoy his Wagner empire in Africa? So these are the questions that we need to ask ourselves. And many people will have been saying, oh, it's quite interesting to watch on Saturday, this rolling news story. It's incredible for 24 hours. Um, but uh, what, what does it mean for me? Of course, we know that there could be implications for Ukraine. Ukrainians in terms of their ability to perhaps mount a counter-offensive, but also possibly a new brutal try and crackdown by Vladimir Putin or, and indeed by the Wagner forces. Um, but also, of course, implications if Putin does fall of civil war in 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 uh, Russia and big concerns really about the Russian uh, nuclear weapons held in Russia and also in Belarus and what happens with those. So, you know, this has real-world implications for everyone in Europe and in Britain. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I think there are three immediate implications. The Ukrainians' massive morale boost, so I think it makes uh, a Ukrainian offensive to more likely to be successful this summer because I cannot believe this is going to make Russian soldiers more willing to fight. It will yeah. make them less willing to fight. And because of social media um, channels like Telegram, Russian soldiers will know what's going on. Secondly, people are going to be vying for power in, in Moscow as it's the beginning of the end for Putin. How long that takes is another question. 
But potentially, Putin is going to become more hostile and more angry. I was watching his television appearance on Saturday morning, and people like Medvedev, his supporters around him, uh, and it's sort of crazy uh, anti-Western conspiracy. Uh, you know, we're fighting against NATO. Um, anything that makes us weaker will, you know, allow NATO to gobble up Mother Russia, all this sort of stuff. So um, you're probably having a more hostile, yeah. more angry, maybe more unstable um, a Russian power base. Absolutely. Really good to talk to you. So appreciate your time. Bob Seeley there, Conservative P, member of the Foreign Affairs Select Committee.